Hello, welcome to another Purple Insider Extra. Matthew Collar here along with Sam Ekstrom. We're back inside today because it is very, very windy outside. So Vikings Cardinals coming up. We're going to give our three things that we are most interested in for this football game. A reminder, check out our longer conversations in the Purple Insider podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, and our written work, purpleinsider.substack.com. While Sam, you are headed to Arizona, so I will let you have the floor first for the number one thing you are interested in, Vikings and Cardinals. You know, I think we talked about this before the Bengals game. How is Clint Kubiak going to call a game? What What is the scripted portion of the game going to look like? We didn't get to see that because the penalties just derailed everything the Vikings wanted to do early in that game. So I don't know if we got a really good indication yet. We didn't get to see him call a game in balanced fashion uh, because they were forced to throw so much in the second half. So let's try it again. Uh, what's Clint Kubiak going to do when kind of all things are on even terms and they're not in second and 20? I think that'll be pretty interesting to see. Um, it, you can give him a little bit of credit maybe for the second half surge, but also they had to throw the ball. There wasn't a lot of uh, choice there that Kubiak had, but they did execute well. Let's see when, when running and passing is on the table, when they can actually get into the play action bootleg game. Uh, how much they lean on Dalvin Cook versus how much they trust Kirk Cousins. I get the sense that it's going to be a big Cook day because Kubiak mentioned this today. Running the ball effectively against a pass rush that features Chandler Jones is a pretty good panacea for uh, for dealing with that uh, kind of pressure. Well, and you're going right along the lines of where I wanted to start is can they put themselves in favorable situations this time? And that means finding a way to run the ball early in the game. Now, we know that the Vikings are never going to become this wildly aggressive, spread it all out, throw the football all over the place in the first quarter. Uh, maybe there's some people that would like to see a little more of that, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. So what's the way to negate some of Chandler Jones's success? It's to run effectively, and we didn't really talk about that after the, last week's game, but I think Delvin Cook finished with 3.1 yards per carry, so he didn't have his typical big explosive runs that we've known from Delvin Cook. It kind of got overlooked with all the penalties and so forth, but they need that as an offense to succeed. And when Mike Zimmer says we're built to play a certain way, he means running the football, getting ahead of games by playing strong defense, and then hitting big shots down the field. And that would be my other thing is, will they come out and take a shot right away? Because that was taken away from them uh, in this last game against Cincinnati, but now they have an opportunity to come out, run some play action, take some shots down the field to Justin Jefferson. They can't come out of the first quarter with Justin Jefferson with minus one yards like he did against Cincinnati. Yeah, you know, they, they worked a lot of short throws, a few intermediate throws, nothing really deep downfield. And, and that was kind of how they operated last year, too. So let's see if they can work it more downfield. I don't think this Cardinals secondary is impenetrable by any means. You know, they do have some interesting pieces, though, on that defense with um, Isaiah Simmons and Buda Baker that are going to move around a lot. Um, J.J. Watt is a big name. Chandler Jones is a big name. So there's some star power over there. And obviously they did a great job against Tennessee in, uh, in their week one game too. So uh, what, what are the Vikings going to see defensively? They've said that they expect to see a lot of the same things that Cincinnati showed. But I think that sometimes you can get sort of wooed into thinking that what, what you see in week one is going to be what you also see in week two when these coaches have a lot of wrinkles up their sleeves. So what will the Vikings show that's different? And what will the Cardinals show that's different? Now, on the defensive side, number one with a bullet is how do you contain Kyler Murray? I mean, he's going to make plays because he's one of the most explosive and quick, fast players in the NFL. And Andre Patterson didn't have a good answer for it. He said, you just have to try to contain him, but there's not a whole lot else you can do. I think the key is not allowing downfield throws from Kyler Murray. Last year, he's one of the NFL's best downfield passers and throws that went over 10 yards. He was 8 for 14 with three big-time throws, two touchdowns um, in that game against Tennessee. The downfield passing game with all the weapons that Arizona has, the Vikings got burned on a couple of downfield throws by the Cincinnati Bengals. To me, it really comes down to avoiding that happening again, and the guy who has to bounce back the biggest is Bashad Breeland. Yeah, and I, I think the Vikings like to have a safety in the box to uh, help with the run and threaten the quarterback. They might have to back off that a little bit in this game. They might need to provide that safety help, especially when they have the speed they do at the wide receiver position. They can blow the top off so quickly if they get a single uh, a man-to-man -man matchup. 
So I think you gotta be careful, you gotta be disciplined with your safeties, maybe do a little bit of too high, and don't let you know Christian Kirk get behind you. Rondale Moore you know, got a lot of run, the rookie from Purdue in, in that first game. He could be dangerous as well. And A.J. Green, wide receiver four, what? I mean, that's an embarrassment of riches that they have uh, for Cliff Kingsbury. So making sure, and, and it feels a little bit like a Russell Wilson kind of game plan, except maybe even more shifty, even more uh, willing to take off and run. And like Andre Patterson said, even if you set the edge and keep him from turning the corner, he'll just go straight up the middle. Um, so he can beat you in a multitude of ways. And when he's beating you with his arm as well as his legs, then, you know, you lose by 25 like the Titans did. I think a major story in this one for both teams is offensive lines. Even though the Tennessee Titans gave up a lot of points to Kyler Murray, it also took a lot of incredible plays. And he was under pressure quite a bit in that football game. But, of course, the Vikings had Kirk Cousins under pressure a lot too. And Cousins in the second half actually did get rid of the ball pretty quickly by Cousins' standards. Um, but in the first half, Mike Zimmer at halftime criticized Cousins for holding on to the ball too long. I think that uh, we need to see some immediate growth, Sam, from Vikings offensive linemen, and we need to see the Vikings take more advantage of a poor offensive line than they did last week with the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, on the offensive side of the ball, getting the ball out of Cousins' hands quickly. For whatever reason, in, in this offensive scheme, maybe it's because they go up a lot of, against a lot of stacked boxes, but that quick little bubble um, out to the wide receivers has never worked that well. And I think they tried it a couple times against Cincinnati, and it didn't work. And they couldn't really get Dalvin Cook going too well in the screen game either. So that needs to be a little more effective. Um, and then on the other side of the ball, the Cardinals' offensive line might have been their, their weakest part of that Titans game. Rodney Hudson was pretty bad. They had another, I can't remember who had another really poor grade in that game. So, yeah, you're, you're going to get to the quarterback, but can you catch the quarterback? Like, you might flush him out of the pocket, but sometimes that plays right into their hands when he gets to freelance and their receivers get to run around in the secondary. So that can kind of play to your disadvantage as well, um, it, it's getting trickier and trickier in this league to stop opposing quarterbacks that are mobile. And uh, and Murray is, and this is the first time they've seen him in the regular season. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Here's a question for you. Do you think that the Vikings offense going on its third year of the same exact system is predictable? Uh, because I felt that way at times last year that early in games, opponents who had decent defenses sort of knew what the Vikings were going to do with some of their play actions and they still had a good offense um, but I started to think about that with Cincinnati where the plays that worked were usually their reactions to a Cincinnati blitz like the touchdown from Adam Thielen or just a special play from Justin Jefferson breaking tackles and going to the end zone but that a lot of their game script that they use right from the beginning of games is sort of the same from week to week and I think what everyone wants to see and this sort of circles back to your initial point mm -hmm. is and I know we've sort of touched on more than just three things uh, that we're looking for but uh, the initial point of like, can they surprise Arizona with something and I, I think that may be the key to getting their offense going right away is can you take a shot down the field right away as opposed to coming out and trying to run the football and you get two yards at second and eight, that whole sort of thing that we see snowball from time to time. I guess I wonder if you think that that's, that that's the case, that people around the league sort of understand this is what the Vikings are going to do. Yeah, they, they know that the Vikings are going to establish the run, right? And I feel like it's becoming, and tell me if you've observed this, I think it's become harder and harder for them to get a clean bootleg playoff because yes. te yep. teams are anticipating that so well that Cousins always has a, an end or an edge rusher in his face. Um, and they've, they've got some pretty strong tells, too, that they're, they're going to run it a lot on first down. They're going to run it a lot on second down. I mean, the second and ten runs didn't go anywhere. They were still doing it in that Bengals game. That was kind of a, a bad quirk of last year's offense that we were hoping would be worked out this year. But, um, yeah, it, it's so Dalvin heavy in first halves. Uh, you know, use Jefferson and Thielen to set up Dalvin instead of vice versa. That's what we've been begging for. But I think everything I've heard today and yesterday hints at another pretty strong Dalvin game. So here's the question. Do they win? Do they bounce back from last week and get a victory in the desert? 
I think I know what you're going to say. Um, I'm going to go the opposite way, and maybe you won't say this, but I think they lose. Um, I, I think that it's tight. I think that it's competitive. And in the end, I just think that there, there's too many playmakers on that Cardinals offense. I think that they kind of outgun the Vikings and, uh, and win by single digits. I'm going to go with the Vikings win. You're correct that I'm going with a W here. I think that Mike Zimmer's teams have generally, and this is not all the, always the case, I'm sure people could point out games where it wasn't this way, but generally when they start to feel like their back is up against the wall, they get a win to keep seasons alive. And that's how even in the bad seasons they've been 7-9, 8-7-1. Um, you know, uh, you know, they always seem to have that one, like, oh, no, we had this bad game, and then they come out in the next game and play much better. So that's my expectation for this one. But it will not be easy. This is not a rollover team in Arizona. They certainly showed that in week one. So this one, I think, is very close, but uh, that the Vikings ultimately sort of, I don't want to say keep their season alive, but it's going to feel like uh, buildings are falling if um, you know you're you're talking about a loss here in Arizona. So we will see, and we'll break it down here on uh, Purple Insider as always. And again, make sure you check out our podcast for the longer conversations, and we'll catch you next time.